Hey, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a real video. Uh, I got a couple coming. I'm doing one on the five speed uh, installs for the Manta and the GT. I also have a video coming in on how to take a, the motor out of the GT from the bottom. Th those are coming up and that's kind of what I've been busy with that. And I also just came back from Europe where I bought myself an Opel Calibra and I brought it over. I'll have a video on that here very soon. And in the meantime, I wanted to go over in this video about tolerance stack and how it can greatly affect your compression ratio and how it can greatly affect how your motor runs and doesn't run in a, in a case of when it goes bad. And uh, with that, let me show you the motor. Okay, so here you go. This is a 2.5 liter from the, uh, from the piston steering video that we did. And as you can see, um, if you look right here, it's really, really smooth and shiny right in the very, very middle of it and not, it doesn't have nice clean honing marks it should. After 500 miles, that's pretty excessive. Um, that should probably never happen, but it does happen to 2.4s and strokers in general. But that will happen after thousands of miles wear, not 500. That was because of the detonation that we were getting on this motor. As you can see right here, we have these nice little clean spot. This one's the worst of the bunch. This one probably broke a ring or the wear in this area because there's a lot of blow-by on this motor which is why we pulled the motor out and I'm almost 100% positive the blow-by was coming right through here. So why did we have so much compression? Well that goes to the tolerance stacking of the different options in the motor and the different tolerances in the motor from when, we, when it got built and when the uh, machine shop was decking the block and decking the heads. Uh, but that brings me to another point topic. I am a hobbyist. I do not do this for a living. Um, I have a lot of experience building CIH motors and tearing down parts and, and getting the motors and getting the cars and such. But what does that really mean? It really means I have a lot of experience screwing up. And my goal here is to make sure that you guys don't screw up in any way that I screwed up and that I don't screw up in any way that I screwed up because, you know, live and learn and the whole idea of living and learning is to learn from your mistakes. So. With that said, um, what I've done when I built these 16 motors is that most of them were always, up until recently, my machine shop built the motors based upon what I wanted done. Most of the time it was just stock stuff and the, the bigger valve heads, which is just regular stuff that everybody's done a million times before. And I would assemble the motors, put the timing covers on, put the oil pumps on, put the oil pans on, and mount the head and do that, that sort of stuff, just assembling the motor, literally. I was not building the motor, I was assembling the motor. The other problem, we, uh, other, not, I wouldn't say problem, but the other thing that went on is that with these bigger motors, I was doing basic research through other Opal people and what they had done over the years because a lot of this is a, roads have been traveled by a lot of different Opal people over the years. Uh, Steinmetz, uh, Reese, uh, Risa, I should say, um, Opal uh, Parts and Service down in Chesapeake, Bob Legere, at, uh, that used to be at CNR small cars. All these guys have built tons and tons of motors and, and shared their advice and experience with me. And so some of this all came into recipes that I would give my machine shop and they would build them and maybe give me a little bit of input on their own. Sometimes it works well and sometimes not so well. And a lot of it because of this tolerance stack issue. And that's why we're doing this video. So with that, and what is a tolerance stack? Well, let's show you this. As you can see here, this piston is setting below the deck by a millimeter. This is how I wanted this one to be because the 2.5 was flush against the deck. That's gonna lower my compression and should help me. That happened because the 2.4 liter block and crank here has a rod that's 134 millimeter and the 2.5 has a 135 millimeter rod. So that one millimeter, you, you see the difference right here in the top of the head. So that's a little bit of the stack, but the real stack comes in, as you can see, the block here is nice and pretty and cleaned and decked as clean as it could possibly be. The machine shop took off metal here and it's same thing on the head. And you do both of those things and you might be surprised to find out that that's gonna affect your compression ratio. One of the things I've learned is back when I've been building these motors, if I would have, uh, I would have some of them that would give me 140 compression, some of them would give me 180 compression, and I'd have some, and usually those are the problem children, like the 2.5 uh, motor, 
that I have, the prototype, they would be running 205, 210 compression. What's really interesting is that generically cannot correlate uh, the compression test results with actual compression ratio. There's a lot more in play here. There's your cam opening position and a lot of other stuff. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So first off, we need to figure out the displacement and the compression ratio. The displacement is going to be easy. That's your, your stroke times your bore and you have your displacement. The rest of the calculations do the compression ratio. That's where it gets to be a little difficult because once you have your displacement, that's only part of the puzzle because your compression ratio is actually more involved. You really have to figure out how much you have in your chamber when the piston comes to the top dead center, how much did you bring in and how much did you compress, and that's your compression ratio. As you can see here in the yellow, you have all these things you can basically measure and calculate. The hardest part of this equation is going to be the wild card, the machining loss that you've lost during, due to decking of the head and the block. And that's where it kind of gets a little tricky. Now one of the things to note is that they usually deck a tenth at minimum oh, uh, when they deck. That is 0.25 millimeters. Now if you ask your machine shop before you deck, have your motor built and you have a fresh original virgin motor, you should be able to get some kind of idea. You'll notice that my machine loss is like 1.75 millimeters because this head and block had been decked at least twice. I think they were pretty aggressive on it. So just doing that, you can kind of see here on our stack how things played out. You'll see here that the difference between just what your standard 10 over on both the head and the block would be is enough to jump you up a full half of a point of compression. And going from 9.8 to 10.4, that can be a pretty big jump and can really affect how your motor runs. So now we gotta understand that. Now how do you solve this problem? If you have it, it's not easy enough to just weld some metal back on and have them replane the motor, you can't do that. Well, fortunately, uh, there are multiple different head gaskets. Now, the basic two head gaskets you can still get today are the L-ring head gasket, which is a blue head gasket, and it tends to be a little thinner. It's a little bit better quality built, but it's also a little thinner, so that's something to consider. And here you can see uh, on these listings that they list them as 0.8 millimeter for the L-ring and one millimeter for the, the vector rims. And one millimeter is what I tend to see on the head gaskets I have. Now, these are Cometic head gaskets. Now, Cometic makes a head gasket from 0.04 to 0.08 thicknesses, which is basically one to a little over two millimeters. And this is a compressed size, it's a compressed thickness. They're much thicker when they're not compressed. And these are the ones that, that I'm using on, on my motor right now. So, when you look at your head gasket combination here, uh, you can see that every little bump into your head gaskets, the first four there, can, can make a whole whopping change. Um, a good example is with the, with the L-ring gasket, you're going to be running closer to 11.6 compression and running the Cometic 08 gasket, you'll be 9.9 .9 compression. And that's all based on your head gasket. The head gasket selection, when you're making some of these motors, can make a massive amount of difference. So going back to our uh, calculator, at Wallace Racing they will have this cranking compression calculator along with the other kind of calculators that I based my spreadsheet on. As I mentioned generically, you cannot correlate your compression ratio with a compression test. Well, with this calculator you can do that to a certain extent. As long as you know what your rod length is and what your inlet, uh, your inlet valve closing is on your cam. With those two things, you will be able to get a rough idea of what your compression ratio is, and uh, it'll, it'll help. And that's how I found out with my 2.5, I was going to be way over with my compression at 11.41. That's how you can kind of look here on, on this seat, where if I had 9.3, I'd be running about 160 to 150 uh, pressure, whereas with 11.4, I'm running 204 to 190, which is exactly where I was on that other motor. You can use this calculator and you can find out what you want as far as your compression ratios and you can also use this chart here for the ISCAMs, circle the inlet valve closing for you to make it a little easier. And with all that, you can find out exactly what your compression ratio is with a compression test. All right, one other thing I wanted to go up about to talk to you about too while we're out here, other than if you could please subscribe and hit that button, like it button, that would be awesome. 
uh, that'd be grateful help for me. And uh, as I mentioned before, I'm trying to get to a thousand. And if I get to a thousand, I'm probably going to make T-shirts or something. I don't know. We'll do something. Anyway, uh, with the stack tolerance differences, I wanted to point out one thing. When you have your head, I mean, you have your cam in your head, the distance between the center of the cam and the chain and the pistons is going to drop just a little bit. And when it drops, that means this chain will move a little bit, one way or the other. You can see like that, you know, you can see where it's just gonna, to get it go lower, it's gonna tighten up and then it's going to change your location of your, your pin. So you're gonna see it sometimes, but as, as I mentioned, all the differences here are very small, very small. So one degree advance can cause you to detonate some more. So it will just make the problem that much worse. So there's that consideration uh, for trying to make sure you're, you're, you've got everything set up straight. And then the other one would be your timing cover. Um, as I mentioned here before, uh, with your timing cover, you're gonna wanna make sure that you can see on this one, right there, that's what I'm talking about. That's how little of a difference they took out of the head. But you can see here, that is going to give me some problems. If I don't sand this down smooth and plane this to make sure I don't have this little ledge here, it's gonna cause some gasket. It's gonna cause me to push this down with the head and it will push down because there's gaps in the gaskets here and gaps where the, the uh, bolts go. But it's gonna mess with the, uh, and put tension where it doesn't need to be put. And you'll end up with uh, a leaky timing cover. And so that's something to also consider. Well, now you can see it's nice and even on both sides. And I've taken care to do it on, to do it well. And I got I put my level across here to make sure I got it nice and smooth. Just a little bit of uh, 40 grit sandpaper. Doesn't, doesn't need to be perfect and smooth as far as this fix is concerned because remember, we're gonna put gasket material on here to make sure that this doesn't leak. And with the comedic gaskets, you'll have to basically make sure you put a nice good bead of RTV around here. And that's why I said the, the roughness of the top of the timing cover is not going to be an issue. And when you tighten it, and then so you can tighten it all down. One of the other things you're going to wanna do when you're using the comedic head gaskets is make sure you put a lot of copper spray on them. I put two to three coats of copper spray so it was nice, even, and thick because they're metal. There is nothing there to seal other than pressure and the metal itself. So a little bit of copper spray will, will go a long way. Um, and I'll even put a little bit of copper spray on the top of the block surface before I put the head gasket on. Well, with that though, um, hopefully that was insightful to you. And if you're building your own motor or trying to custom build your own CIH motor, uh, you'll have a you'll you'll avoid some of the pitfalls and this will be a little bit informative for you and again if you like the video and you like my videos i'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and uh, hit a thumbs up for me if you really like this video thanks